So anyway, the first thing we do when we're going to shear an angora is we find a start and we just blow into the back. And then um, with scissors, you've got to be very careful never to, to actually cut their skin. So you want to go in under and turn the scissors away from the skin and then cut. And these aren't the greatest scissors. I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> so, um, oh, oh, there's the basket right there. You oh. can... Thanks. <laughs> so typically you want to angle it and then get in underneath here and then cut. <laughs> Um, it, usually about two, two and a half to three inches and then they're perfect for shearing. I'm not cutting too low on her, I'm actually leaving her a little bit on because it's still cold. But typically um, when it's summer you can shear to the skin and I use the electric shears for that. So, uh, and they love it, they actually do love it when they're shorn because it takes the weight off their backs. And it also, um, well, I have to tell you this, it puts them into season. So the girls get happy and the boys get crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. So they don't get upset about having a haircut. You'll never have a problem with it. That rabbit doesn't look like it gets most upset about anything. No, it's very I well. It's so most of my bunnies I breed, I breed for the fibre, but I also breed for the body, the shape of the body, and then I breed for their disposition. Because like you know what, you've like got to handle them so much. I was going to say, are they like that because you handle them? I mean, yes, that's my guess. That helps, that helps too. And you can potty train them. They're, they're really a good pet to have. If you're a spinner, this is your companion. You should have one as a pet. <laughs> uh, do we have any spinners in the house, by the way? Fantastic. Oh, great. Well, Fantastic. And you can pass this round if people want to have a sample. Well, what are you going to put? How many should you have in order to make it worth uh, sales? For me, I have 50. 50? Yes. Ooh. Yes. And that's as many as you can cope with. You don't want any more than that because you, you start, unless there's more than one person helping, but 50 is plenty for one person. How long does it take this year with the electric This stuff? stuff feels like air. One hour for me. Wow. It feels yeah. like air. It but it took me four hours the first time I did it. Because <laughs> you're fearful of hurting them. You think you're going to nick them, and you, so you're really, really careful. And then you start to realize you can't nick them, you know. If you set the shears at the right angle and everything, it's just technique. It's like anything. And what is your setting on the electric clippers? I actually keep it at a. T I use the ten. I like that setting, and I keep it at about a. Just so I get an eighth of an inch on the bottom. I'm actually right. doing this by hand at the moment. Right. So. Yeah. With with that again not not the best shears so uh, that's know, my fault not hers. Yeah, I can see. I, yes. <laughs> Did you hear that, Dan? Wherever you're at. <laughs> I can't believe how that. Yeah. I have friends who raise Germans and they find them to be very elusive breeders. They're not. They are a little more difficult to breed the the German rabbit uh, because they are a pedigree. Like all pedigreed animals, they are a little fussy. But if you, I had this um, this rabbit that would not breed for about two years, and I took her to a judge and I, one of the rabbit judges, and I said, look, she won't breed. Everything I do, and she's nasty, and uh, she's just hissing at me. And you know, people were saying, oh, you should eat that one. You should eat that one. And I'm just <laughs> like, no, I don't want to eat her. I don't eat my friends. You know. And um, so anyway, she said, give her one more chance. So what we did, we bred two females either side of her cage. She had to sit in between two other females and watch them birth and watch them raise their other bunnies. Next thing, we put a male in with her. Guess what? She bred straight away. Babies. She ended up having the cleanest, best baby. She got mother of the year. She was the best in the barn. Yeah. So it's... They learn off one another and they just, sometimes they just get a little aloof and you just have to persevere. So how long would it normally take you to do that if you weren't like talking to us? One hour. One hour. When I'm on my own. I can do them 50 minutes to an hour, but from start to finish, yeah. 
It's a little more difficult underneath to do yeah. because you've got all the private parts to deal with and you've got to be very careful. You never want to make a mistake in that, that area. So you take it slow because they never forget. <laughs> it feels like air, doesn't it? It's so soft. It's cotton candy. It is cotton, yeah. It's, well, it's better than cotton, yeah. actually. And this is, this is how your spinners want this, just like this. This is a dream. And, and you never want to compact it. You just want to let it yeah. be free and, and just put it into a bag or put it into a box. That's like and just nothing hand it to them. Ever just felt soft, before. Yeah. yeah. And and you spin that up and you can make beautiful products with that it. That is amazing yeah. how yes. soft you know, that is. Oh my I was gonna bring a spinning wheel here to have on a demo. Had I known we were gonna share her, we could have actually just been. Yes, you can, and actually I have one rabbit, um, I have some English rabbits, but one in particular she got about a five inch staple length this year and it literally just comes out as you touch her or if you brush her it's, she's just a net it just gives and you can actually take that and spin it as you go i would just cart her right so, now oh, yeah yeah, yeah exactly just, no you don't even have to cart it literally you can just <laughs> straight to the wheel the, oh, yeah or the drop spindle yeah or the drop spindle yeah, perfect yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah carrie here does a lot of drop spindle work right right but all of these things, um, you've just got to you've just got to play. It's like anything. Um, our great grandmothers, that this is what they did. They would make things from nothing, and we can do it too, you know. And these these rabbits, to give you an idea, they're um, actually an endangered species now in Germany because not a lot of people in Germany are actually farming anymore. So. America has this breed and I believe some countries in South America and once it's gone, it's gone. So uh, this is about heritage breeds again, yes. you know, so it's all good, good work. So where can you get one? You can, get, you just have to go online um, and look up a breeder. Iagarb is the uh, international um, Angora, German uh, German Angora um, Breeders Association. You can get them through a breeder there, or um, you can link through the um, North American Wool Cooperative. We have breeders as well. Yeah, we, we actually seed people. So if you do want to, and what we do is we say you can take one on trial and see if this is for you because it's not for everyone. I'm telling you, it is hard work. It is. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It is labour intensive. <coughs> but it is very um, joyful what you get back. If you're a fibre artist, this is a dream. If, if you are not into fibre arts, it can be a lot of work and you'd say, why would you want to do this? So it's different, different strokes for different folks, you know.